Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody all around the world um, to our topic Kanban meets team topologies. We've got Radek here today, who's going to um, be the presenter. He's been in the Kanban world for a long, long time, and he's a fellow um, accredited Kanban trainer in Poland. Super happy to have him here today. Um, if you have any questions, just please shout out, put in the chat, Every all questions welcome. He will talk about this as well. We are recording this. And for those who are new, who hasn't, who hasn't been to my meetup before, you can find the recording on the Kanban New Zealand YouTube channel. I'll put that in the chat in a minute. And um, there are most previous recordings on there as well. Um, Dan in Australia, unfortunately, can't join today, but we still have some of our neighbors here because most of them are also in my meetup group. Um, we usually share them, but we have the Kanban Australia conference in uh, September, and there is a lot of preparation to do. Plus, we have some new classes, so he just couldn't make it. But I will cover for this because we work together. And I'd say now over to you, Radek. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Silke, for having me here. Um, <clears throat> and uh, thank you, all all of you. Yeah, I know a different time of the day uh, for joining us. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's look at uh, team topologies. Uh, probably that's the topic which also attracted you here from a kind of Kanban lens perspective. Uh, as Silke said, I'm uh, for quite some time uh, a person who is heavily involved in like looking uh, uh, at organizations from the Kanban perspective, uh, if, uh, if it helps to uh, improve the way we work. And I'm always open for new uh, concepts which could uh, help us uh, doing it even better. And uh, the, the topic I want to um, share with you or reflections I want to share with you today is basically uh, that uh, I see some kind of uh, similarities or, or some kind of synergies between um, how we could look at organizations and how we could improve the flow of information or value in organizations if we uh, at least uh, combine some elements of, um, of uh, these two uh, approaches. Um, my my Polish colleagues who are present here for quite some time may know it, but I uh, several uh, months ago asked um, a question before my meetup if their team or the team that they work with is really fully independent. It means if they are capable of delivering value end to end. And um, I don't want to repeat the results here, uh, but the re results weren't really uh, a surprising and b super optimistic. <laughs> So uh, for the majority of the teams, uh, people reflected like, nah, we have dependencies. We, we rely on other teams. We work in uh, multiple teams uh, to provide uh, value to our customers. Um, so um, this was a starter for me to think like, uh, yeah, of course, there are different models, how we should collaborate, how we should interact. Uh, but we usually have more than one team in our organizations, especially bigger organizations. So how to how to have our uh, our heads uh, wrapped around it so um let me uh, let me start um, with uh, what we're going to talk about and what we are not going to talk about so for sure we are um uh, yeah managing your expectations um what I, I will give you a very general intro to team topologies i'm not going to basically uh, you know uh, distill the whole book <laughs> Uh, I, I leave it for uh, for you, um, but we'll, I will I will cover some topics. Um, as you already know, I will cover some compatible elements between team topologies and Kanban Kanban method precisely. Um, I will talk about evolution approach to uh, organizational design because uh, yeah, it seems like team topologies, but well, organizations are made of teams, um, and um, I also promised in the um, yeah, a kind of uh, short text promoting this event that I will also uh, look at the uh, perspective of team topologies uh, and Kanban from, uh, yeah, all change agents perspective. So if you are a Scrum Master, if you're an Agile coach, if you're a manager or a, or any other formal or informal uh, change agent in the organization, maybe you will also find something uh, helpful for you, especially for you as an individual or you as the team of maybe professionals like yourself. 
Um, what we are going to not talk about uh, is like, a, a, I would say, deep dive into cognitive load elaboration. I know that this topic is one of the topics which is like uh, resonating a lot with um, community. Uh, some people agree, disagree with the cognitive load definition used by team topologies. I will uh, speak about it, what, what does this mean in a moment. Um, and uh, of course, there are many fears and myths and misconceptions about uh, team topologies being approached, which solidifies um, even more silos or, or separation of teams or limits collaboration, uh, which I have found interesting because, uh, sorry to say it, um, for me, in majority of cases, <laughs> uh, it was a result of uh, basically, uh, yeah, not reading the book or <laughs> not getting the concept whole. So uh, you can, you can of course, build your uh, opinion based on on, on something uh, yeah superficial uh, let's go into uh, yeah uh, details so um i guess uh, not only uh, team topologies is something that interests you but uh, as uh, yeah silk's meetup is about kanban uh, or uh, limiting work in progress so probably you are familiar with the method um, so I wanted to start with uh, a kind of uh, yeah energizing uh, activity. Feel free to you know give your thumbs up uh, virtually or uh, write in the chat or even shout out. Uh, which of these terms uh, sound uh, Kanbanish to you? So flow. Who believe flow is important in Kanban or for Kanban? Anyone? I see some thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. People say yes. Flow makes sense. Flow of value, flow of information, right? We we always uh, aim for the flow for the end customer, but also flow of information from which we can learn, right? So this is um, this is very, I would say, in line with um, uh, with Kanban. Uh, explicit policies sounds Kanbanish to you? Yeah, okay, I see. The same or more people, yeah, more, more people than flow. I'm surprised. Or maybe you just woke up so, <laughs> or you stopped your supper, wherever you are. Okay. Um, evolutionary change. Does it sound Kanbanish to you? Okay. I see some people turn on and off their thumbs up. So that's, uh, that's, that's for sure. Um, um, yeah. A kind of, um, I guess, proof they are there. Uh, focus. Focus meaning balanced workload and focus meaning protecting people from overburdening. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, I hidden some, some topics from Kanban word uh, here, like, uh, you know, limiting work in progress. And uh, yeah, my beloved one, no wishful thinking. <laughs> Okay, maybe still a few thumbs up because uh, what I love particularly about Kanban uh, is like we, we we don't aim to build ideal models uh, where people need to uh, act like they would be uh, really you know um, ideal ideal beings. Um, so all of these things you can also find in the world of team topologies, and this is what I want to um, take you um, today. Uh, of course, these are just uh, maybe four or five elements uh, which can be familiar and, and resonating with Kanban people. Um, so let's uh, let's see what we have in here. Um, also, as a word of comment, I will ask uh, some questions during the presentation. So if you if you want to, you can of course uh, participate and, and guess. I, I don't have any uh, yeah uh, awards or, or gratification, but uh, you're welcome to join. Okay, so let's go into trenches. If we talk about the team topologies, for sure we're going to talk about teams. And uh, it's it's a very uh, obvious uh, statement that it's good to work in teams because uh, teams are probably better than individuals. We have, uh, mm, we have diversity of opinion. We have uh, people who can uh, support us, people who can help us. Uh, but question is like, what, car what kind of teams are we talking about? Um, yeah, if we if we just uh, take the concept of a team, not the a team, that's not the one with uh, you know Murdoch and B. A. Baracus for those born in the 80s, they know what I'm talking about. Um, so if if we take any gener generic uh, team, uh, it's it's hard to say if it's a good team or bad team, if it's a good performing team, if if this team is like uh, really beneficial for the organization or maybe harmful. 
Um, we, for I would say over two or three decades now, we have this concept of the agile team, meaning like it should be cross-functional, it should be independent, it should have all the cons all the skills the necessary to deliver the value. Um, and of course, uh, there's a very often, I would say, misconception that it means like everyone in the team can do anything. This is what I wanted to reflect in this picture that as you can see, all these four people are, are having like uh, their, their um, I don't know, t-shirts, uniforms, uh, uh, dresses, like, uh, you know, uh, colored with all maybe three different skills that they need. And we know that unfortunately teams like this are hmm, a wishful thinking for me because uh, I believe we, we very rarely see uh, people who are like, uh, yeah, capable of being cross-trained, interested in being, uh, you know, jack of all trades and, and know all of it. In reality, our teams more often look like this. Uh, so we have uh, some specialization, we have some uh, skills uh, shared, uh, but uh, what we are afraid of is, is teams like this. Yeah, so teams which are like uh, only yellow, only red, um, we know that uh, this is a kind of anti-pattern of having, I don't know, a front-end scrum team, right? Or something like this. That's that's not what we aim for. Um, and uh, I would say the team topologies is the concept, uh, first of all, uh, takes us to very important question, what kind of teams we have now? Um, so I will give you a very precise, actionable example in a moment, uh, but uh, if you enter a new organization as an employee or a consultant, you may hear that we have agile teams. You know, you know, we, we have agile teams, they have stand-ups and so on. <laughs> so a uh, very artificial look at, at what the teams uh, are doing or how they actually do. And um, yeah, we should also aim for a question what kind of teams we need to optimize for flow because we said that flow is uh, is important. So um, I will uh, give you now a short intro to uh, what Team Topologies considers as type of teams and an interesting idea to give it a try in, in your organizations. So first of all, what kind of teams we have? Um, team topologies, as the book, as the concept, um, the, the body of knowledge, uh, identifies often observed type of teams. Uh, it means these are the type of teams which usually exist in organizations, even though they are not exactly identified very often, and they are not uh, precisely called the way the team topologies uh, people call them. So first type of team that we identify is a stream-aligned team. Uh, this is something what uh, should make... Uh, you know, all um, agile people uh, and, and customers in the end happy. Why? Uh, because we say this is the team which should end-to-end -end deliver the flow from a need or, or, or a request or a demand to generate value, uh, to deliver something to internal customer if, if it's necessary, but ideally to the end customer. Um, and of course, we have teams like this, and teams like this are, are uh, what we aim for, because these teams usually uh, really uh, make things flowing, right, from, from end to end. We cannot, uh, you know, look, uh, look uh, away and say we don't see in our organizations something what is called complicated subsystem teams. Complicated subsystem teams are something what are like uh, specialized teams, and uh, I, I made this like, you know, uh, this is like a Schrodinger box. So something is coming in or a black box and something is coming out. Uh, but uh, basically no one except people in this team know what is going on there. This is the, this is the voodoo box. Like we don't know what is inside. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's known for the people who are working there. Uh, this could be, for example, a legacy code. So if you have the old component that you need to work with, uh, maybe these people like, you know, uh, work in the organization long enough to, to know they are experts in it. Uh, very often we say that this is uh, something which is like very complicated, uh, even, you know, mentally to, to wrap your heads around it, maybe like a complicated math, like, I don't know. These days, this could be uh, AI or machine learning or, or whatever else. Um, but sometimes complicated subsystems, uh, not to mention IT world only, uh, exist for very different reasons, like legal constraints. So, for example, only some people in the organization have the clearance 
from the government or someone else to, to basically do the job. And uh, yes, we could place them in um, different teams. We're going to talk about it in a moment. But uh, the initial state is that they form some kind of group, some kind of team. And for example, only they can do it. Yeah. Um, maybe it's just a single person bottleneck, right? So we, 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 we could see different uh, cases here. Um, we also see very often uh, enabling teams and enabling teams are something what I believe all change agents like uh, very much because these are the teams or individuals in the teams who teach others. So uh, they are the people who enable, like the name says, uh, others to do something. Uh, they empower uh, other people to do uh, something that they haven't done before. This, of course, could be, um, I don't know, transferring the, the heart, uh, let's just say, knowledge uh, or, or skills, maybe something that we, I disagree with this term, but uh, call uh, soft skills or uh, maybe new technologies or, or, or something like this. Um, the fourth type of um, yeah entities in organizations, sometimes outside of organizations, if we look at the org chart, is something that we call platform groupings. Platform groupings are basically like boxes which uh, have some internal structure inside. I'm not sure if it's like like well visible on the on the drawing I made, but you could imagine that there are some. Uh, stream aligned teams inside. There are some complicated subsystem teams inside. There could be enabling teams inside. But from the external perspective, uh, this looked like uh, one box that we use, that we communicate with, that we collaborate with. Uh, but we know it's uh, it's uh, something that we maybe call in our everyday language a platform, but it's actually a platform grouping. So so it's, it's not uh, like fully consistent uh, structure inside or like fully uh, homogeneous structure inside. Um, so um, where is Kanban in it? Um, any ideas like uh, all the things that we have discussed here? Like, uh, do you see anything uh, related to Kanban or compatible with Kanban? Anyone? That's a hard question in the morning. You know, I believe this all teams has something in you know the entry on the entry on and on uh -huh. the end. yeah. So there is a uh, at least you can uh, say there is some kind of system, yeah. So you can yeah. set some boundaries there, yeah. yeah and probably can banish, I believe. Yeah, so I'm not maybe an, a Kanban expert, yeah, but no, no, yeah. <laughs> like I, I believe, like I believe, Tom, I, I believe, Tomek, like all these teams could have a Kanban board, which could become a Kanban system. They could make yeah. the flow uh, of work from uh, left to right. But I also see a great comment from Todd on, on the chat that stream aligned teams support flow. This is what we're going to talk about, right? Th these are the the, the white, uh, uh, let's just say, uh, teams, uh, like stretching from left to right, having different, uh, uh, different uh, skills inside. Uh, but I want you to, to look at it this uh, from uh, maybe a different angle. So we have this change management principle in Kanban saying, start with, start with what you do now. And uh, I um, I would like us to to basically uh, think of it. What kind of teams we have now is something that is, I would say, oblivious to many organizations. They they don't know like what what what, what is it? Yeah, uh, I see great comments also like dependency management. Uh, yeah, is needed absolutely. And and the more of different type of teams we have, probably the the, the dependency management is 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 ha harder to do. Um, yeah, and 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 a question uh, how we could uh, yeah um, set up a pool system across this team. Very good. So um, why I referred to, to the change management uh, is that uh, I propose uh, to do the exercise in your organizations. Um, so basically, if you very often um, explain the concept, you may find that, for example, people in your teams will say, oh, we are a complicated subsystem A team or we are a platform grouping. And this should be worrying. Why? Uh, because I don't know if we are able to establish flow, if we are uh, if we are able to establish a pool system, like one of the uh, participants uh, uh, have just written in the chat, if we have a setup like this. Uh, because if you see 
no stream aligned teams, but only sub complicated subsystem teams or platform groupings, uh, yeah, we, we have a problem. And now I would like to invite one more uh, Kanban special guest uh, here. What is it? Do you know? <laughs> What's the icon that you have just seen? The small picture. KMM. Yes. Thank you, Anthony. Kanban maturity model. If you are not familiar with it, I also recommend it. If you are familiar with it, you probably know what we would find in here between maturity level one and maturity level two organizations. When we say maturity level one organizations are mostly team focused and indeed they have collaboration and maybe transparency, but they are uh, very often local optimums, right? So we have teams uh, which are like so much focused on doing what they are supposed to do uh, or what they feel is like productive uh, or what is good for flow that in the end, it's not a customer driven organization. Uh, because we have many local optimums. And um, if you also look at uh, what uh, what kind of uh, values we have in Kanban maturity model, uh, the flow that we want to talk about from uh, yeah, very morning today or very afternoon for, for some of you, uh, appears only or, or for the first time truly at the customer-driven organizations, uh, which are maturity level two. So um, the, the short idea, um, yeah, I would like you to uh, to think of is like, if you understand these concepts of these different type of teams, yeah, four types of teams here. And if you ask uh, your CEO, CTO, your manager, your, your, I don't know, head of department, whatever is your setup, what kind of teams you have. And if you can ask the same question, a little bit rephrased, what kind of team you are, uh, to the teams, you may have different answers. So very often the CEO will say, yeah, we have only stream aligned teams. They are all agile. They all have standups. They all have, uh, I don't know, whatever, you know, BS here. While if you ask the teams, they will say, no, we don't think we contribute directly to the end customer value. We are like complicated subsystem. We do the voodoo that no one else know in the organization, right? And that means that you have a problem because you just identified by just, uh, you know, uh, trying to, to map existing teams, uh, map, I would say, identity of existing teams to um, to these concepts, to these type of teams. And and if there's a, if there's a delta, if there's a gap, if there's a ch like a difference between it, then you may have a problem. And now this is like interesting moment because many people look at it and say, oh, so, can, so Kanban says like uh, flow, uh, team topology says flow, but in the end we have complicated subsystem uh, teams. Uh, this is like the nightmare of the 80s with the component teams. Yeah, um, don't, don't be fooled by that and don't go for easy solutions. Uh, if you feel like you have a problem, uh, then uh, there are people who can say, that, well, it's super simple. You need to reorganize the whole organization. You need to change the teams. You need to give them the new names. Uh, we have a poster for you. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, yeah, now, we, now we're going to make you feel safe. Okay. Uh, no, I, I, I don't want to go this way. Um, but I want you to think of it like from the evolutionary point of view, we say no organization structure is ever done or the ultimate. If your organization is 50 people, you will probably need a different structure inside of organization uh, than if your organization is 150 people. Yeah, And if you operate in a one market uh, and, and have one product, you probably will need a different structure organization. Then you have two, three more products or you, you change to, to a service company. So... What is interesting from the team topologies perspective is they look at organizations as adaptive socio-technical systems. What does it mean? Socio means like, well, systems are made of people. So people have their limitations, people have their preferences, people are humans, not icons. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, uh, but this is the topic, uh, this is the term from uh, a book of... Um, uh, um, Taylor, the nudge, um, yeah, uh, Kass Sunstein and, and uh, Taylor, they, they said like, well, 
if if people would act according to the rules of uh, let's just say traditional economy we wouldn't have a problem that we have problems that we have because people are emotional and illogical right and it's easy to to build a huge system uh, like the one in the poster here and say you can apply mechanistic view to you know people uh, in the organization and they will work like in a factory but we know it doesn't work this way and the second aspect is like it's a socio-technical system. So all the things like Dunbar's number, like Conway's law, like the cognitive uh, load will apply to your organization. So where is Kanban in it? Well, as I already said, for me, it's evolutionary change. And uh, the second aspect of Kanban here is, is one of our service delivery principles, which says like evolve policies and improve for customer and business outcomes. So it means that even if we build the Kanban systems, if we connected Kanban systems across the organization, if Kanban systems that we have uh, reflect the way organization looks now, uh, and we feel like it's, well, maybe not best, but good enough what we have for now, um, it doesn't mean that it won't uh, change, it shouldn't change. And I will talk about this change in, in a moment. Okay, so we, we have talked about the type of teams, uh, but there's one more important aspect, which is for me also like really key in the uh, team topologies, uh, which is here, what we don't see. What we don't see is the team interactions and team topologies is very much about team interactions. And I believe Kanban in its roots, it's also about like how we communicate. So let's put the type of the teams aside. I made them smaller here. And let's talk about the type of interactions that uh, team topologies also says is often observed. Yeah, Again, it's not the only type of interactions. It's not like uh, one is better than the other. We're going to talk about ups and downs of all of them. So how do we usually interact? Well, who doesn't love the word collaborate? Maybe a small uh, story for all the people who are not from, not from Poland. I know we have some Polish colleagues here, but um, in Polish cooperation, cooperacja sounds good. Collaboration doesn't uh, have good connotation, uh, but that's for historical reasons. In English, as far as I understand, we differentiate that collaboration is something that we do intentionally, right? So we want to collaborate on something to, to basically uh, deliver something, right? And we believe collaboration is this good type of uh, of interacting. It is good type of interacting, but on the other hand, it's very, I would say, energy uh, energy draining type of of interaction, right? So you you cannot uh, equally um, intensive collaborate with too many teams or people at the same time uh, because uh, it uh, requires a lot of time and a lot of energy. On the other hand, sometimes you are just interested in a simple repetitive uh, or, or maybe just uh, clearly uh, described uh, deliverable from the other team or a vendor. And uh, we could say, how about we interact in a way X as a service? For example, if I'm a hiring manager and I need someone new to my team, I go to HR, I would like to uh, have uh, their help to hire a new teammate for me. And I don't need to become a specialist in the employer branding or a recruiter <laughs> to do that. Yeah, um, and uh, very often people that uh, that are here as scrum masters, agile coaches, change agents, they would like to see themselves, and that's a good way to uh, yeah facilitating the change, facilitating meaning increasing the um, capacity, increasing the the skill in 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 a different team or a different group. And these three types of uh, interactions is what team topologists uh, uh, suggest to look and also design between different teams. So we could say two stream aligned teams could have a heavy collaboration between them because they built one product or maybe they built, um, uh, I don't know, two, pro two products, I don't know, like iOS and Android or something like this. So in the end, we want to uh, deliver end-to-end -end flow. We want to deliver value, but we have uh, some some differences. Maybe we have two teams because uh, yeah, it's it's a, such a big product that we need so many people. Um, but uh, it's quite natural that at some point they say, well, we are not going to build I don't know an application uh, app store um, uh, on our own. 
So uh, we we use this as a service, or maybe we are not gonna, I don't know, write uh, GOIP uh, service from scratch. We're gonna use existing, which could be internal, which could be external. And then we have this type of interaction X as a service between the stream aligned teams and, and platform groupings, um, which is uh, okay, probably. Um, and then the enabling teams come into the picture because uh, we know that uh, requirements or skills which are needed from the stream aligned teams change over time. And uh, how does it happen that we actually teach something uh, new, the teams or the, teach, uh, or the teams teach themselves or learn something new? So maybe it makes sense that we um, make it explicit that we have enabling team which through facilitation is, for example, teaching the stream aligned team DevOps or AI or a way of working, which is called Kanban, or maybe they teach them how to, um, I don't know, do the user research. Yeah. So whatever we believe is necessary and they don't have the skill, it would be good that they start having the skill and we, we transfer the skill by facilitating um, from an um, enabling team. Um, what is interesting here is that in the world of team topologies, uh, this kind of concept of how teams interact with each other uh, is called team API. Uh, sounds technical, and maybe that's interesting because behind team topologies, we have uh, many people who are software architects and, and developers. So uh, maybe that's the name. Uh, where is it coming from? But I believe it is actually a kind of interface of, of this team or these two teams how and, and for how long and in what way uh, they should um, interact. Um, so where is Kanban in it? If you look at the team API, anyone sees a similarity to one of our practices? I, I, I'll give you the, the, the hint. It's number four on the practices. Hmm. Oh, yeah, explicit policies. Yeah, at least the number help. So maybe I'm not too abstract with my uh, my uh, com my my concepts. Yes, thank you very much, Eric, Jan, and and thank you to C who also wrote it. For me, the way that we document, the way that we specify, the way we made it transparent, uh, how teams should in interact, is nothing else like an example of of making policies explicit. And uh, again, just like I told you several minutes ago that I know many organizations who have no clue, no agreement, what kind of teams they have. Uh, it's the same about like what kind of interactions we have and what kind of interactions we should have between two teams or all the teams in the organization. Yeah. So how to start? I would say, again, let's refer to how about we do what we do now and let's try to document it. Let's create team API what kind of team it is, what is it responsible for, or maybe what is it not responsible for. Let's uh, define what is the way of working. In bigger organizations, which are not homogeneous, some of the teams will work in, I don't know, certain fixed cadence like Scrum. Some will work based on the flow. Some will work uh, based on, I don't know, OKR three-month cycle. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other. Of course, there are some differences. But first of all is the awareness how the other team is working. Because if we work on a, on a flow-based, uh, uh, let's just say, concept, and, and they work in iterations, then, of course, uh, we need to build uh, the right uh, communication. Uh, we may need to have dependency management that one of you have um, uh, written um, a moment ago uh, in order to make the information or, or value flowing between these two, these two teams. This could be even about really obvious things, right? So like how to contact us? Is there a channel on Teams or Slack? Uh, how to write a ticket for us? Where do we have our daily? How to join our daily? Uh, where to find our board? Um, but what is also interesting okay. from the evolutionary point of view, if we say this is the diagram of our current interactions, so our team is yellow, stream aligned team, and we collaborate with the other yellow team, and we use X as a service from the complicated subsystem team, the, the, the question is, 
should it look like this in six months from now? So what is the future? What is the prospect of, uh, way of inter interactions? Maybe we should be aware that in six months from now, we imagine, it doesn't need to always uh, become reality, that our interactions should look different, that, that maybe we'll stop using this um, component, we will uh, start collaborating with a different team and, and, and so on, yeah? So, um, so this is uh, this is really interesting, and um, I I see the conversation in the chat. I would say think uh, yes, there are some templates. Uh, you you can find some. I would say again, just like Kanban boards, inspirations how to do it. But I encourage you to build it by your own. Yeah. So, uh, for example, I don't think you will find the the link to the daily in the template. Uh, which is published by Team Topologies Community. We added in one of the organizations that that we work that I work with, and it was interesting that uh, let's just say out of five or six teams who did this exercise, uh, one said we don't want to publish link to our daily because our daily is our own, our private. Like wow, okay, I I'm not criticizing this, but it tells me a lot that five out of six teams are not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, afraid is a word, uh, bad, a bad word. But they are, they are, they are, they are okay to publish it. While the other one says, like, well, no, the daily is for us, and you cannot even join. Okay. Um, so again, start with where what what you do now in terms of type of the teams, but also how the teams interact. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, this is really interesting. Um, again, if you look at the teams uh, which provide X as a service uh, interaction to others, uh, they may be under very, I would say, uncomfortable so, uh, position initially because many stream aligned teams could uh, request uh, something from them. And uh, who should they uh, serve first? What do you say, Kanban people? Where should be, where and how it should be written? Uh, communicated, documented, who do we serve first? Do you know the, na the name for a policy like this? Class of service. Yeah, classes of service, but also pool policies, right? So who do we serve first? Yeah, thank you, Anthony. Uh, what are the SLAs for the expedites, like a class of service? Uh, what are um, SLEs, so expectations, maybe for the things that we do for you, like we review your pull requests? Um, how fast and how do we respond through the, yeah, for the could you do X or Y for me uh, questions? Uh, maybe in terms of dependencies management, we also uh, always allocate some kind of capacity for requests from one team uh, because this team is working on, I don't know, strategically important project on fire. So when I look at the team API uh, from the Kanban perspective, I see pool policies there. I see entry criteria like, um, like uh, definition of readiness. I see classes of service. I see also classes uh, of reservation there. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, this is what we uh, should aim for. And again, uh, in terms of even visualization, I uh, in one of organization we made a, a map like this. This is just a dummy map, so don't don't take it uh, for for something uh, super important. But we said yes, we identified that this team and this team are working uh, closely together. This is definitely definitely collaboration. Uh, we have uh, this team, which is enabling team, and they are teaching something new, uh, one of these uh, stream aligned teams, and this should take two months. Uh, at the same time, these teams are having X as a service, uh, let's just say, type of interaction with DevOps teams and with other application team. So have a visual map, which uh, shows you not only what type of teams you have, but what kind of interactions you, you have in here. So we still haven't talked about much about flow. Uh, so uh, I want to talk about uh, flow at the very end together with uh, hidden whip limits uh, concept here because there cannot be a Kanban uh, presentation without whip limits. That's what I believe. And uh, we, we're gonna talk about it again from a different angle from uh, yeah through team topologies uh, lens. So 
um, what I what I believe is is like a truly uh, explicit in the book, in the concept, in speeches from team topologies community, is that we should build and evolve organizations for fast flow. Again, like we started with, uh, this is something what I believe is is compatible with Kanban. And uh, we do it by uh, being aware what kind of teams we have, what kind of uh, interactions uh, between these teams uh, we have. Uh, we also know that this is uh, evolutionary. So we know uh, that uh, the design will change. And if we build organizations for fast flow, we should also be aware what actually impedes the flow. Uh, what impedes the flow are all the things, people, dependencies, uh, politics, uh, technology, you, you, you can list, uh, 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 you, you can create a long list of, um, of items impeding the flow. Uh, if we look at uh, team topologies, what they say very often, the thing that uh, impedes the flow is something that we call a high cognitive load. Cognitive load is, is basically uh, a situation in which teams or individuals in the teams are under heavy mental workload I said initially that I'm not going to go deeper into the, um, let's just say, discussion about psychology of cognitive load, because you will find uh, different groups saying that it's a cognitive load, it's not actually mental workload. Uh, but I would say the high cognitive load is very easy to, to understand uh, if it's there or not. It's maybe just like an air. You don't see it, but if it's not there, you feel it in immediately. And again, uh, you can see a reverse situation with the high cognitive load. If it's not there, um, it's it's manageable for people and the teams to do their job. If they have high cognitive load because they are constantly, uh, you know, told to do something new, teach uh, something uh, new out of their comfort zone, even if they haven't, uh, let's just say, found the uh, the island of uh, stability yet with what they do. Um, what I believe this is very, uh, very much in line with the high whip. So if you look at the team, um, uh, if if the team uh, have uh, high whip in terms of different types of work that they do, uh, it requires a lot of uh, context switching. It requires a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, multitasking. Uh, I would say tax that they pay. Um, so if we see that the high cognitive load and, and high whip, uh, we usually see low flow and we usually also see a low sustainability of the work. And again, where is Kanban in it? We know that we have this Kanban agenda, uh, which is called sustainability. So we would like to make the work flow, but we would like to make the work flow not in a crunch mode, but in a sustainable way and sustainable way. I understand as people really enjoying the work, uh, people having pride in professional uh, services that they provide, in the quality and so on. Um, so if you if you look at the organizations from Kanban perspective, of course, you want to establish flow. You want to build the pool system like one of you have uh, uh, said in the chat. And... Um, I believe if we are looking for allies, how to do it. But what I also believe what we what we can do is like actionable tools, like building team APIs or or first of all mapping organizations to different teams of uh, type of teams. Uh, maybe referring to Kanban maturity model as well. Um, this these two things can uh, go um, hand in hand and and help us to to manage the organization to evolve, so to change. Um, and uh, yeah, um, try to try to improve the way we work, the way we um, introduce uh, changes, also in evolutionary way. Um, yeah, last thing I wanted to share is is what I also promised in the um, let's just say um, intro to 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 this event is like how team topologies could help us if we are scrum masters, change agents, and so on. So first of all, as I already said, we can show to organizations their true maps. Very often we join the organization. Actually, yesterday, a new client of mine have sent me their org chart. So I got a, a diagram like this on the left. This is our team. This is our second team. Uh, these are the people. These are the job titles. Uh, this almost never reflects the way people interact in an organization. So it's, it's good to translate it into something like this. 
And uh, I believe it also shows the real needs of organization. Because if we see that streamlined team is uh, not getting uh, the flow that the management expects because they are missing one certain skill, then the question is, how do we do it? Well, maybe we should facilitate this team to, to basically learn the skill. But who's going to do it if we have no skill inside or outside of our organization to do it? So this could be a kind of stressor, talking Kanbanish, to, to show this change is not going to happen if you don't change the way you do, do the work, if you don't introduce something uh, consciously, if you don't design this evolution like we do it in the Kanban maturity model. Second, uh, I would say even more down to earth example how team topologies could help us is that uh, we could avoid the trap of, of making team uh, or teams dependent and becoming a bottleneck by, uh, yeah, um, by, by helping them. So I very often hear that if the team needs to go agile, Kanban, whatever, um, we need to hire someone to help them. Maybe that's not a bad idea. But the question is that uh, what happens if uh, if this person becomes a bottleneck and he or she becomes the only person who does it for the team? Yeah, And uh, I believe uh, this is the situation when we say if we have a complicated subsystem team and we want them to teach flow metrics, DevOps, microservices, whatever, um, we should design it by saying I'm enabling team or I'm enabling team member and I'm going to facilitate uh, the change. I'm going to increase your competences, uh, but we should know how long it will take. We should uh, have an, a, a kind of contract uh, that I'm not going to do it for you forever, that I'm going to go away in three months from now uh, or I will uh, leave you uh, to you know, try it for yourself in a month from now, and then I'm going to come back to, to basically um, help you learn from your possible mistakes. Uh, instead of just, you know, I'm going to coach you, I'm going to offer you my, serv my services endlessly, uh, because this is like teaching your kid to, to ride a bike. At some point, you, you need to, you know, uh, remove the extra wheels and, <laughs> and let, them, let them try on their own. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you go away forever. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe with your kids, it's hard to plan how long it will take to to teach them. But if you are professional, maybe it's good to you know communicate uh, some some healthy uh, I don't know pressure stressor that you know this is this is the time that we have. We should learn as much as we can in this time. And uh, one final thing is here in yellow that uh, very often I see working as a consultant, joining different organizations, that internal groups of Scrum Master, Agile coaches are often forced to be just yet another team, while these groups are so different in skills uh, that they, uh, and, and, and very, very often spread across big organizations, that it's super hard to, um, uh, to basically uh, see them as the team. Uh, and what I believe uh, is uh, we should uh, identify what kind of services we provide. Again, we may want to build the, you know, cross-trained, uh, become T-shape, womb-shape uh, skilled people. And uh, we as the Scrum Master Agile coaches uh, should communicate how do we do it? How do we do it now? And this is a great example for, for uh, Team API. Now, I showed you a short example how to build the team API. I see that the link about team API template is now getting popular on the chat. But I will say that from my Kanban perspective, the great example of a tool, great example of a, an approach to build the team API, and not only for agile coaches, uh, is a technique which we very well know from Kanban. Anyone knows what I'm gonna talk about? This is the last question. What do we do to identify uh, what kind of services we provide? Cool, yeah. But a kind of static, yes. I was waiting for this uh, abbreviation. So for me, Team API very often, uh, I would say, uh, is generated as the outcome of the static exercise. So we identify where is the what is the services that we provide. Where is the demand coming from? Uh, what is the nature? What is characteristic of it? Uh, what existing classes of service we have? 
uh, and so on. I'm pretty sure you know the steps of static, so I'm not going to follow up. But uh, if we look at it, uh, the team API um, can be the, the result of, uh, of a good uh, static session. And what I put in here uh, in, in gray is now, because we know that static is also not one-time exercise. Uh, we should probably do the static, uh, I don't know, re refresh it every, I don't know, several months if we have, uh, for example, significant changes. And therefore, we should also review regularly the team API. So we communicate to the organization what we do, what we don't do, uh, what kind of interactions we have with what teams we are busy now. So all the teams that you have seen on the team API. And uh, from my professional experience, because I think I've did it already three or four times in different organizations, combining static, combining team API approach is a great for all agile centers of excellence or, or ways of working, enabling team and, and, and et cetera. Okay, so uh, yeah, why else I should care about um, team topologies? And this is the last slide. So have you ever seen a marketing team on the safe poster? Or customer support? Or recruitment? Anyone have seen it? I'm not gonna show you the safe poster now. Um, <laughs> So I'm, I'm teasing you with this question, but of course, I believe team topologies is the concept, just like Kanban is applicable to all type of knowledge work. So of course, uh, for last uh, 40, 50 minutes, we were talking about uh, probably uh, software organizations in our heads, but I believe platform grouping, come on, the HR department, people, uh, the part, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm afraid that I just did it, Eric. So I'm, I'm super sorry because it's gonna be in safe 6.5. Um, no, but uh, jokes aside, HR could be seen as a platform grouping. Inside it, we have, uh, whoa, uh, employer branding, recruitment, hard HR, and so on. Uh, but this is the platform that we all use as, uh, as uh, hiring managers and teams. And uh, maybe in order to involve uh, streamlined team members uh, uh, for now, we use this as a service, but in the end, we should enable the streamlined team members to participate in, in the interviews. Maybe for now in our marketing department, the SEO team is this uh, black box that we don't know how to use. And uh, they look to us as a complicated subsystem team. Uh, right, but maybe in the future, in order to do, I don't know, on the fly research, if uh, if our system is converting better, uh, is getting more satisfaction from the customer or is, uh, I don't know, used heavier because someone in our IT team is, is basically learned uh, something, uh, is, is taught something uh, from the, I don't know, marketing world. Um, this could be also uh, interesting to see. So um, again, uh, team topologies is very often having a kind of backdoor to many organizations through IT. But if you are looking for something which is also applicable to all type of knowledge work, I believe you may uh, find interesting um, inspirations there. And uh, that's it. So I'm open to your questions. Thank you for all the comments during the, the speech. Uh, I, I really superficially went through it really briefly. I, I recommend not to rely on even not my talking here or other uh, opinions, just read the book. Uh, what is really interesting, there is like a very, very thin book, which is called or a booklet, Remote Team Interactions, uh, which is the kind of extension or addition to, to the original book. So yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or want to get in touch, uh, offline because maybe of a time zone uh, you need to start work if you're in Europe or you need to go to sleep if you're somewhere else uh, just just send me an invitation ideally through, through LinkedIn I'm, I'm happy to uh, just get in touch uh, yeah thank you so much Radek really enjoyed um, your talk and also the chat that was going on um, on the site um, people, if you have any questions, please feel free to unmute, um, uh, say hi, any comments you have. Yeah, I just wanted to say it was, you know, opening my mind, actually, 
because the team topologies is something I was uh, thinking about reading the book <laughs> and you give me today a good reason to to, to do it at least okay. in the, the next time but Radek uh, I maybe another question how how long how much time do we have because probably uh, it, it, no, I'm, I, I, I can do stay. Do we need to end in three questions. minutes, or no, no, uh, you no, know, no, 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 no. we have no. longer? No, no, I'm, I'm I, okay the, to answer. Uh, the meetup is or the event is set up for two hours. Two hours. We're not playing <laughs> okay. for another hour, okay. of course. Okay. That is more like a bit of a buffer, as we yeah. do, you know. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, Tomek, feel free to ask. Yeah, and everyone else as well. Yeah. yeah so, so if I you am... have questions, feel free to stay and ask your questions, have your comments. And if you need to drop off, that's fine as well. Yeah. Okay, so I am really interested in some examples of this uh, um, Agile Center of Excellence because this problem you mentioned uh, that, you know, uh, a lot of uh, Agile Centers of Excellence uh, are trying to work as a team. Uh, I've seen this uh, almost everywhere I was uh, working. Mm -hmm. And uh, this concept actually changed or flipped the responsibility uh, that instead of being a part of the solution, yeah, we are changing ourselves. You know, I don't we, want... We become to, a problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually, no, I, I'm thinking about, you know, it's like uh, the... It's flipping the responsibilities from being a scrum master connected with yeah. the team, building, you know, relation, long term relationships mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. into uh, and and at the end, uh, living there as a part of the system. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. uh, and that means taking some responsibilities. Yeah. Okay. For so, ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And this flips this around to more like an agile coach i don't want to you know go into discussion on yeah, different sure. in scrum master and that agile yeah. coach but you know joining for a moment yeah yeah uh, helping doing something enabling mm -hmm. something and then mm -hmm. you know going doing something else yeah, yeah? I, I i think it reminds me of the conversation that we had in in the meetups actually live in warsaw some months ago so um i would say uh, i see it this way that the Agile centers of excellence or ways of working enabling teams are or should be seen as enabling teams from the team topologies perspective. If your organization is okay to embed a scrum master or anyone like this uh, into the team permanently and uh, you believe this is bringing uh, value, you can uh, afford it also financially. Who am I to say that you shouldn't, right? And I don't believe like team topologies or anyone else will say like you, you shouldn't, yeah? Um, on the other hand, uh, I believe that we also have some limitations, even if we join as a Scrum Master Agile Coach and, and uh, we simply don't have uh, all the skills that we discover are needed for this team. And of course, uh, we can try to learn and probably we should learn for our professional development and, and for uh, uh, benefit of the teams to, to do it. Uh, but maybe uh, someone else could join us uh, temporarily to enable us to do it as Scrum Masters and show the team's benefits of it. So I don't know if uh, if the team has like a Scrum Master, only this Scrum Master can work with this team. Yeah, Maybe there is another person who can join and, and teach us something new, like the metrics or the tools or whatever else. Yeah, And again, if we start a collaboration like this, if we st start uh, facilitating, uh, so building a new skill in the team, I believe we should build some kind of uh, contract. How do we do it? That I join you, but I don't join you permanently like the Scrum Master. Uh, so I'm here to, to teach your Scrum Master and you to become independent in it in uh, several weeks or months from now. Yeah. So we give a kind of healthy pressure that I'm not here to do it for you forever. Um, on the other hand, we have extreme where the organization says, I cannot afford to have full-time people to, to do, for example, a change like this. So um, so what are we going to do? So does it mean like we don't deserve to be agile because we cannot afford Scrum Master in every team? I don't know. Maybe evolutionary you will change with uh, just a small group of people who enable the, the teams uh, to do some very basic practices to improve their way of working. Maybe over time it will change. Um, to, to 
avoid a long speech uh, for for now, Tomek. I will recommend you to yet another book, uh, which is called uh, Sooner, Safer, Happier, where I believe is like uh, this described very well how to build such uh, such uh, centers of competences. Yeah. Tomek, did it answer your questions, at least in part? Yes, if you could repeat the, the yeah. name of mm -hmm. the book sooner. Mm -hmm. Sooner, safer, safer. happier. Mm -hmm. Safer, happier. Yeah, mm -hmm. actually, yeah. Uh, it's like, um, because this is a problem, actually, I, I had uh, in my practice as a mm -hmm. Scrum Master or, or Agile Coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that uh, you know it's like going directly to a team uh, usually I see some uh, expectations from me mm -hmm. like okay you are now here so what would you do what you will mm -hmm. be doing here yeah? and uh, you know it's and sometimes in in something mm -hmm. like uh, I, I'm building a dependency between me and the team. Exactly. And, and exactly. at the end, you know, there is always a reason how to, that mm. we don't need to learn about flow or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we have a person we have that a guy to do, do it, it. Yeah. for us. <laughs> and this is totally not working. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen yeah. it working that a team that doesn't... Yeah. Need doesn't so, so understand I, I, flow yeah. are doing, you know, a good job in terms yeah. of flow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I see the book BVSSH is, is like uh, known here. So again, thank you for uh, yeah, knowing I'm not the only one who read it. Uh, yeah, I, I recommend it to you, Tomek, as well. Okay, cool. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah, any more questions? I see people dropping because I believe it's 9.04 in Europe or most of Europe. So it's daily time <laughs> coming. People are going to grab yeah, their coffee. Yeah, probably dropping off to their dailies. And, and those yeah. in New Zealand, Australia probably want to just um, <laughs> end their day. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm helping an infrastructure team about to try and adopt some of this. So uh -huh. um, uh, this is going to be interesting. I'll let you know. Um, Anthony, did you want to um, want me to stop the recording first? I. Uh, yeah, just some stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, thanks I'm everybody. Well, some stuff I'm happy to share, but not on, not like playing on public. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Me in a private message. Thanks everybody who who was here. Feel free to hang in. We're just stopping the recording for now, and see mm -hmm. you next month. Can I?